really wish I can turn that off. <laughs> That's so loud. Um, how many did you get in? Um, I think I got 20 in. Nice. It's a good productive morning. Yeah. I have a child all of that. That's fair. And then I got my MLS last night. Oh, good. I'm trying to figure that out too. Yeah. The so once you log into MLS, use go to their so under external links on the home page. Um, it has uh like North Star MLS YouTube or something. A YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, they have a playlist that is super helpful for brand new agents. So <laughs> Hey, Irene. Hey, Corey. Hello. Hello. <coughs> Most people do use on Zoom or? Um, mix, very much so. Handful in person, handful in, on Zoom. Like Corey's down in Mankato area, so. Irene's, Irene, you're in Georgia, right? I am. Okay. I don't know why I second guess myself for a moment. I'm just like, wait, is she in Georgia? Yeah, she's in Georgia. Uh, she's just as admin. Okay. So. She's in Georgia? Like the state Georgia, yes. Okay. <laughs> so she's definitely always the answer. Yeah. We'll get started here a little bit, guys. Can I ask you a computer question? Yeah, what's up? Have a second? Yeah. So I'm not super tech savvy at all. So how can I make this like a button that I can click on instead of having to type it in every time? So if you use that little star, uh, you click that, and you can click done, and what will happen? You're welcome. Sometimes it usually is. <laughs> Actually, let's be fair, it's most times. And then you said under what do I find that YouTube video? So once you log in, so if you do the matrix login. Oh yeah, the portal login is weird and it will just bring you to generic. Not super helpful. Having a hard time. Yeah. You can start if you want to start. I can figure this out later. 
I give it a little, I always give it like a minute or two because people are slow to join. Yeah. Although I just realized that clock is really off. I should probably just update that one. It's like, oh, it's like four after. Just yeah, kidding. Now, that says exactly at two. So I was like, oh, we still got time. Just kidding. All right, we'll get started. Um, hi guys. So today's class is a whole lot less tricky and a whole lot more how to actually apply command and to the MREA. I'm hoping at least you know what it is. Uh, show of hands, voice, whatever you want to do. Who has read the MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent? Anyone online? I'm going to take the silence as big no. So guess what? Your homework is, if you do not own one, you are going to go buy one. See the front desk. Okay. Um, it is, I just closed the page. I was going to reference because that sums up my day right now. Um, MREA has a whole lot of systems and a whole lot of models that really there should be no reason that you're not following those models and systems. Sorry, yeah, it's with my one on one. You're good. Have you read the MREA yet? The millionaire. Um, mil oh, gee, uh, Louise, can I talk today? Yeah. Well, hey, you're so the rest of the everyone has to start and finish it. So you just have to finish it. Okay, you can have uh, this FYI. You can YouTube it too. So you can like listen to it anywhere if you want, or you, good luck finding it if you started reading it where you're at. But, yeah. Cool. I'm definitely, I have to physically read it. Otherwise, my brain just. <laughs> nothing is comprehended in my brain audible <laughs> books not for me um and that's okay uh whatever you need to do to read it and you are going to want to read it multiple times it is not a one and done because no matter where you are in life in business you will take something else out of it that you did not take before so plan on at least one minimum and then usually what a lot of people do is either twice a year or once a year some people read it like constantly i'm like yeah i don't not that not that much i think i've only read it four times well, then they have that blue one, the one the so there's one thing and then there's the investor book too one thing's good Usually that one you can read once and be done. Every now and then, if you need a refresher, re reset on mindset, something like that, one thing's really good to read again. All right, so today's class, I did say that we are not doing a whole lot of tech. Um, I am, my goal today is really to sort of refresh your mindset about the millionaire real estate with tech tied in. Okay, so here's some of our objectives today. You do notice I do have applying command to lead gen model. So we do have some tech played in and it will make a lot more sense once I go over some of the other spots. Let me minimize this so I can actually see what's going on. So the whole concept of this class that I created was it's a three part series. Well, this year it's three part series. Last year I did four parts, but this year I sort of adjusted to be a three part. So the following two weeks will be a lot more tech involved. This one's going to be really just sort of big picture, broad overview, how you can actually apply some of these concepts to commands. Sound like a plan? What I want to always aim for is the breakthrough points. Because 
what will happen is inevitably you will reach a point that you hit your ceiling. And I want you to just keep thinking ahead and keep trying to think about breaking through to the next section. You'll notice there is creativity. What happens is when you try to be creative on your own, when you're setting up your database or setting up command or smart plans or anything like that, you try to be creative. And what happens is it actually brings you back. What you need to focus on is the models that is in place. Don't recreate the wheel. Like you, you got a whole bunch of lot of really good stuff. Use what's there before you try to bring your creativity in. Make sense? My favorite, the six myth understandings. So I will be going over all of these and talking about why I want you to change your mindset because, every, so this is again, revolving around tech and revolving around command. And a lot of the, the objections that I hear from agents, new and experienced agents, is pretty much all of these I've heard of some sort when I'm teaching tech. I can't do it. Um, I then say, cool, how do you wash your clothes? I can't do tech, I can't do my database, I can't do whatever. Usually it's, I can't do tech, I'm not techie. Great, how do you wash your clothes? Usually it's a washing machine because unless you're hand washing down by the river, you're using tech on a daily basis. We all have phones, we all are tied to them. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to throw it out the window. Um, realize that that's just your, your little drunk monkey saying you can't do something. I don't want you to say, I can't do it. Because you totally are capable. I know this. I am fully confident that you are all capable of using all of the different systems that are in place. Fair? It can't be done in my market. This one tends to be revolving around marketing. Um, Facebook ads. I know Tati is doing some Facebook ads for Kelly. Um, I mean, you guys did the Mother's Day giveaway and you guys didn't even think about doing a Facebook ad. So you can always do something even if you didn't think about it. Always just keep an open mind because it's it can be done in our market. It can be done in any market. It can be done in our market. Take too much time and effort. Tech is not easy. I understand that. It does take time. It does take effort. But that shouldn't be the thing that holds you back from pushing forward and actually doing your database. Welcome back, whoever logged off. Uh, just brain farted on what I was talking about. Uh, they should not be your deciding factors on just making your calls. I know who's all online. We have some newbies, some experienced. So, no matter where you are, you always have time to just do the activities. Because without the money making activities, <laughs> the rest doesn't matter. Okay? It's too risky. I'll lose money. Good news commands free. So, ta da. My clients will only work with me, only I can go and learn quality service. This is definitely not about tech, um, but as you're developing your unique value proposition or reevaluating your unique value proposition, remember what clients are looking for is the quality of standards that you set in place. Yes, we all have friends and family, 
And yes, we all expect them to use us, but in reality, they don't. I've had, I kid you not, three different times with three different who I consider pretty decent friends. I've all had a conversation with, I was doing the activities and I kid you not within under a month, I found out they sold their house, not with me. After they just got done saying, nope, we're not moving. Awesome. Let me tell you, that is a freaking kick in the butt when you hear that and see that on Facebook after they just said, nope, we're not moving. It's like, cool. So remember just, put forward your standards and the rest will all follow. Having a good goal and fulfilling it is a negative thing. I think all of you on, I know you two are in PC. Toddy, you're, I mean, technically coaching with Kelly. Uh, Corey, are you still in PC or are you in growth coaching? Neither. Oh, neither. Well, you you have Amber that you're kind of coaching with. Yeah. Who is zero seven ISR? No one. Okay. Um, Irene. I mean, you are. That will be me, Israel. Oh, hi, Israel. And so you're doing PC, so. Uh, and then Irene and Jesse, you guys work with your fantastic agents. And I know they all have goals. The reason why you set goals, the reason why the PC agents will set goals with Jess is because without some sort of end goal in mind, you're just going to be sort of dragging your feet and paddling water and not having an idea behind what you're doing. That's why you will set goals. Not reaching them is not a bad thing. Not reaching them just means you have to work that much harder next year to reach them. And you will always learn something regardless of if you reach those goals or not. Fair? All right. The nice thing about this class, it tends to be a little bit quicker. I do about 45 minutes and then a lot of Q&A and stuff like that. So this is lead gen model. Since none of you have read the MRA, this will look a little foreign and a little weird, and that's okay. This is lead gen model. It starts all the way up top with prospecting and marketing, and then down the funnel, all the way down to close. You will notice I added some little blue words, those should look somewhat familiar. Okay, some of you might are still staring at like, where's the contact? This word just only, that's okay. It will all make sense, I promise. Every applet that is in command is tied to some portion of the lead gen model in the MRE. All new agents, I put you right in this spot. The reason why is because your contracts are people that know you, like you, and trust you. There's no reason to be up in this little section quite yet because you haven't even told people that like you that you're in real estate. So you gotta start somewhere. So you are feeding your funnel right from the get go versus sort of trickling things in. The rest of you, the non new agents, you have what's, or you have open to campaigns, referrals. I mean, everyone has an open to, but you can do some prospecting and marketing. Once you get to the point of you've touched all your contacts, then you can start being prospecting and marketing based. Mostly it's going to be marketing or prospecting based, marketing enhanced might have just said that wrong. Darn dyslexia just might have won. Where 
Where'd it go? Prospecting phase, marketing enhanced. I did say it right. Okay. I have really bad dyslexia, so I am horrible at switching up words. So <laughs> right now I'm like, wait, that doesn't sound right. And what prospecting based marketing enhanced means is you are looking, actively looking for business. And marketing is just going to help you get that business. So prospecting and agent sites are your prospecting based things. And designs helps you with your marketing. And ultimately, and referrals is always super nice. Referrals is easy. Which then feeds into your funnel. So your prospecting and marketing will give you leads, which then you will turn into contacts. Once you connect to them, you'll get them on smart plans. You'll cultivate them through the smart plans. And then it'll bring you down your opportunities. I know. You sort of took the new boot camp. You took boot camp, right? Everyone else on Zoom of PC version you took boot camp, right? Yep. Awesome. So what you will notice is this looks very familiar to the opportunities. So you're cultivating, creating opportunities, having appointments, getting signed listings, going under contract, and ultimately getting your paycheck. That is what the lead gen model looks like in command terms. Any questions on that? I see a chat. Oh, three years ago. So I am going to hop over on command. Might have, might have fibbed a little. I do go on the command a little bit because I want to actually show the life of a contact. Can I type? No, no, I cannot type today. That's fine. Some of this will be refresher for some of you. Some of it will be kind of new. And this is just in the life of a lead into your, into your ecosystem. So you're doing open houses, you're doing whatever activities, you're making phone calls, you're making whatever. Don't care what the activity is. They're all good. They all work. They all are wonderful. Just do something. Do the activity you are going to inevitably get someone that says, yeah, actually I do have a friend that's looking to buy herself. You are going to hop in command. You won't have team command probably. And then from there, you're going to add the contact. You are going to add your email address that you get from your friend. And you are going to add their phone number that you get from their friend. And I mean, you know where you got the lead source. So you will look for, oh, look for your sphere can't type, and you're going to mark them as from your sphere. Now, if it were from somewhere else, there's a whole bunch of different ones. There is the ability to, uh, you can create a new custom source as well. What I would suggest is until you get an idea, stick with what's in there. Don't try to recreate the wheel. What, what a great example. I've seen so like I know open house. 
uh, citywide garage sale, um, pretty much anywhere that you got the contact or lead from. That's what that contact or that lead source is. And I mean, ultimately, if they're already in your contacts, all you have to do is select from contacts and say who it was from. If the person that gave you the referral is not in your contacts, I challenge you why first, and then you can use that spear button. You will notice this button that says mark as lead. So a lead is a person that has at some point raised their hand, but you have not connected with them yet. Meaning you have not had a two-way conversation with them. So you would mark that person as a lead. And then once you have that two-way conversation, you can uncheck that as, or uncheck the mark as lead button. Make sense? And then once you figure out sort of the contact tags that you want to utilize, a lot of people will say sphere, a lot of people will say open house, pretty much whatever makes sense in your head to sort of divide up your contacts. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, my, my oh, finger got stuck. <laughs> it looked like you were raising your hand, but I saw your face. I was like, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, so don't get hung up too much on the tags because at the end of the day, as long as you have the contact information, that's really all that matters. And then as always, more information is down below. For instance, if you had their physical address, you could do it that way. If you had their social media profile link, you could add that. You can add their birthdays, home anniversaries, and any relationships that they have. And once you're done, you're going to create it. Oh, fine. I don't know what contact has that email address, but anyways. And you refresh it and you'll have your contact. If it works. So now from here, you can do a lot. So we're going to just keep following down the funnel. So we got the contact. We're going to do our activities. We're going to add activity and say, I give Chris a call here. Usually you're going to have a conversation and figure out what the heck is going on with that lead. And because I did actually have a conversation with that person, I'll say that I, they responded. And now I can start keeping track of the activities and the emails and all that stuff with my contacts and leads. And since I actually talked to this person, I'm gonna come over here and uncheck that it's a lead because I've actually had a conversation with that person. So Chris here is looking to buy in the next three months. So I'm gonna go over to opportunities and create an opportunity. And because it's a buyer, I'm gonna change that type to buyer. And I don't know the address yet, so I'm not gonna add the address to the opportunity name. And we already know within the next three months, we don't know the budget yet, and over in Hudson, the average commission is not 2.7, but it's 2.4. That commission rates how much you are going to make, likely, not like if it were a listing, it's not going to be like the 6% or whatever you collect. And then I'm going to be setting the appointment. So I'm scheduling the appointment right now. And all I have to do is create. Yeah. Um, so when so you know when you go into where you can see your commission, what your projected commission is going to be. So I've been putting it in there. Well, at first I was putting in whatever it was, like five point seven, whatever. But then it would calculate it out. And I'm not going to put big deal, but it would calculate it out as the publisher was going to make like the full five point seven because it doesn't take another part that you're going to pay that in. Yep. So 
for like the listings, what yeah. you would do is instead of 5.7, you would do three. three. Oh, okay. Just three. Just three. If by chance she ended up taking both sides, mm -hmm. then you would leave it as 5.7. Okay. Arguably. Okay. I'd still probably put it down to three because you're going to have the two opportunities. Okay. But just what you're going to collect on that deal if it closes. Okay, so I've just been doing whatever she's going to charge minus the 2.7. Yep. That. So that's okay. okay. And like buyers, like whatever your typical commission rate is going to be, whether it's 2.7 or 2.4 or 2.5 is uh, becoming more common, even 2% is pretty common in some parts of Minnesota. So wherever your market is, that's what the percentage, commission percentage you're going to collect. And the good thing is you can always change it. So yeah. if you end up buying and the average is 2.4 and they happen to be offering 2.7, yeah, you, you get, you get more money. So, yep, whatever you're charging. Okay, I was putting it in there as the, you know, the buy of whatever. Yeah. Like, and, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's whatever you expect to collect. Okay. 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 Yep. So we have Chris buyer. We got the buyer's opportunity. So I'm going to go pop into my buyer's opportunity. As I set up my appointment with Chris, I will have some more information that I can fill in. Once they get approved, I will be able to add how much budget they're going to be making or spending. That little pencil for your friend. So I'm scheduling my appointment with Chris for, to, I'm scheduling it today, but we're going to have it next Friday. And let's assume that we've had the appointment with Chris and we've signed by a rep paperwork with Chris and we've signed it on the day of our appointment. I'm going to add the agreement date. And then I'm going to come in here after they get the pre-approval. I'm going to add how much they will be spending. Convention or finance type, you can add just for more information for you to be able to keep track of some stuff. And all I have to do is save. So now all the pertinent dates, all the pertinent information is all in one spot. So I don't have to try to go through my email and try to find where the heck I saw how much they were going to be spending. It's all in one spot. What I like to do, so when I'm doing a buyer appointment, I actually have three pieces of paper. It's called my wants and needs analysis. First page is my deal breakers meaning there's three items on that deal breaker sheet that they the house must have. Otherwise, we're not looking at the house. There's the really nice to have, I'd pay extra for. And then there's the everything in the kitchen sink. So if they drove by a house and saw a gazebo and they're like, that'd be really cool to have on a house. Great, put that in the everything in the kitchen sink. The reason why I go through those three pieces of paper is actually so I get to know my client especially if it's a client that I have no clue about. Um, if it's a friend, I have a little bit better chance, but if it's a total cold lead and I don't know them, I kind of want to get to know them as quickly as possible. And you'd be surprised how much you learn about your potential clients when you say, what is anything that you could possibly want in a house? They're literally going to spew all sorts of stuff. So I like that. So that's the everything you can think. So that's right. what I call it. It's, I literally have three pieces of paper. The first one is lists out the deal breakers. Uh, shoot me an email and I can send okay. it to you. And it's literally blank pieces of paper. I make it pretty. So well, it's- So you say the deal breaker. Deal breakers. Like anything um, I'd be willing to pay extra for. So upgraded appliances upgraded flooring, stuff like that. And then the, everything in the kitchen sink is anything that they possibly ever thought about that they might want in a house. And that's my buyer. 
I don't have anything fancy. Not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong. If you have a bio presentation, I just keep it simple. I like to get to know my clients. And then I say, great, are you ready to sign with me? And then they don't question it. So, because I've just had a 45 minute conversation with them. Who's going to say, no, I don't want to sign with you after they just spilled their guts about their entire life, basically. So what I do is I will literally scan it and upload it to my custom folder. I just do wants and needs and create the folder and upload the document into there. So that way, A, I don't lose it. B, if for whatever reason your buyer ends up making the or trying to say, oh no, I want, I'm okay with two bedrooms, but their wants and needs said they had to have three bedrooms, you can then bring it up to them and say, okay, so this is what you fill out because they're filling out these pieces of paper, not you. So, so remember when we filled this out and you said you had to have three bedrooms? Has something changed? that two bedrooms is okay now. That will happen more times than not. And this serve as a nice way of, okay, so this was your own words. Are we okay with this or do we need to change anything? So I save it in there. I'm horrible at losing paperwork. And so I literally, I will scan everything and upload everything and save everything before I even have a contract for an offer for a property. So now we've had the appointment. We're going to start doing the paperwork. Since I'm looking in Hudson, I'm going to select the Wisconsin side. Most of you are going to be just the Minnesota residential. And I'm going to go under contract and I will make sure to upload all of my lovely documents for the Market Center and submit to Market Center. Once you get to under contract, make sure you go and change uh, there it is. appointment to under contract, or more importantly, you would have changed it to active when you sign fire prep paperwork with them. But we forgot that step, so we're going to switch it right to under contract. So now, what Patty was talking about was this. Uh, potential and probable income. The reason why you're putting your percentage of, of what you're collecting is actually calculating your income. And this is my favorite part is knowing how much money I'm going to be collecting up a little bit. Uh, so you'll notice I have potential income of 4,800. That's the reason why it's not 4,800 and not probable is technically uh, until you have 50 deals in the sales pipeline in demand, the conversion rates will not, or it'll just be standard conversion rates. And there's not a 100% conversion rate from under contract to close yet. If there's still a chance that falls through. So the probable income slightly adjusted down. So that's why it's lower. So don't be confused when you see the two difference. Make sense? So now we're closing with Chris. We're moving, moving and grooving. We're going to close with Chris. We're going to say when the closing date is. Sure, we'll put it as today. So now what you're going to do is you're going to want to make sure to go and update Chris's contact information because you just sold Chris their property, you're going to edit and add their address because now you have it. Maybe, maybe not. Just kidding. Let's try that again. There we go. So you'll update their address. And now what will happen is they'll have a primary address and they'll also have a primary neighborhood. 
Now, those of you in rural areas, your neighborhoods might be a little funky and that's okay. If you notice that there is no neighborhood here, you click on that add neighborhood and find on map and basically go into a bigger, one of the bigger spots. So if you were, if you just sold in Lonsdale, maybe I'd choose the largest, closest spot to the address. So if it was like right here, I'd, hey, that was weird. Let's try that again. So if it was in the middle of that white space, I'd probably choose like that one and that one, um, just so it's sort of a mix. Chances are this is probably pretty farmland based and this one might be a little less farmland. So depending on the property type, I would sort of make that, make that determination based on the area that I know. And you click save. So from now or from here, then you're going to repeat the process. Yeah. Um, when you have a, when you add someone to a neighborhood that's in like um, Lakeville or something like that, how many do you typically pick? Like in, like if they, if it doesn't pull up or you're adding it manually because they're looking to buy in that area or something like that, typically I will sort of go with the like two or three larger ones. Okay. So like, for instance, we'll just use Todd Grove since it's right there. Like if I didn't have a neighborhood that it automatically populated, I'd probably choose like this one, definitely this one, and probably those. Okay. Just basically make a square around the city, okay. essentially. Okay. Maybe that one. Probably not that one. Just okay. because that's such a little sliver okay. and just click save so usually not more than like four or five usually not the nice thing is so you're going to add the neighborhoods and you're also going to add them to a monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan i can find it on the list there it is and what will happen is when they first oh because I don't have an email address. When they first get the email ad or the email about the market stats, they'll be able to actually add their own neighborhood. So if it's a buyer, so this is like that monthly neighborhood nurture is really helpful for people that are snowbirds that might be looking to buy or sell, well, mostly buy down south. Just go find some of like the bigger pockets of neighborhoods and put a handful on there because when they get the email, they can then go in and say, oh, I want to add this neighborhood and this neighborhood, and they can customize it to themselves and it'll show up on command for you. Okay. So you can see, oh, hey, they're now looking in, they were looking in Florida and now they're looking in Arizona. I should probably go into referrals and make sure uh, I have some partners in Arizona. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense? Mm -hmm. So that just basically repeats that lead gen funnel. You just you feed from the top, you go through the bottom and you just keep rotating around because at no point are you going to stop communicating with even close buyers and sellers. Makes sense? Any questions? That was really the life of the lead. For the most part. And this will be videotaped and yes. stuff so teachers going through it. And, not just wanna... and if, like I said, this class is a nice big picture. Come make sure you join next Thursday and the Thursday after. That's when we're going to dive a lot more into how you can actually use some of these pieces to actually get you business. We like business. I have a question back yeah. to your um, deal breakers. Yeah. <laughs> so do, is this like a form that you fill out or do you have them fill it out? I have them fill it out. You have them fill it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you guys talk about it while they're filling it out. So and let me just like scan it and put that how you put it into. So I will show you exactly what it looks like. 
So I have needs. And well, this one shows six pages because I did back to back. I don't know why. So deal breakers. So obviously, like I, so it's labeled one, two, and three. They write out their thing. And then before I send them to the next page, I do some notes. I ask some clarifying questions. So that way I know exactly what they're talking about. Like no natural light, meaning she wants lots of natural light. So everywhere light, windows in all the rooms. Yeah, it was, it was super fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, must have at least two bathrooms, garage space. She has a boat and a truck. She doesn't want them outside. So I got that information. And she doesn't want a busy road because she has a dog and a cat, two cats. And any other notes? Turn my blank page. And then other, anything you've ever, that's the kitchen sink. So it came out of, a little out of work. So this is the kitchen sink list. So anything that could possibly be wanted in a house, that's where she listed all that stuff. This is really just to get to know what her style is, get to know what she's looking for, what she's not looking for, pretty much anything that will help me narrow down houses. And then the willing to pay extra for. So she put pole barn. She put pole barn like on all three pages. She really wants a pole barn. I, that's pretty clear. Like she wants a pole barn. And she'd pay extra for a fence yard and some gardening and all that fun stuff. And I always like write my own little notes just so I remember what I have a conversation with. So it's twofold. Puts it in their own words, their own writing. And it gives me a space to clarify any questions I have for them. And like I said, after 45 minutes of going through these three pages, they're not going to say no. I'm not going to sign a buyer rep with you because they literally just gave you their life story. Kind of. Life story in a home. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. My, so I, when I was in productivity coaching, there was a special guest and literally this is all she has. She has a, she has the paperwork with her, but it's literally in a folder underneath the chair type of thing, nowhere on the table. And those three pieces of paper with a pen and it's for every single buyer. So if it's a husband and wife and a kid, all three of them get the piece of paper mm -hmm. because <laughs> Like the James and I, what I want in a house is definitely not what he wants in a house. Like his priority is a three car garage. I'm like, whatever, I want, I want my car in a garage. That's all I care about. But you get to, you get to learn about the entire buyer versus just how many beds do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? And that sort of stuff. And do you have like a template for this or? Yeah, I can send it to you. Okay. It's literally, I I mean, I created this in Canva and I literally have little cutesy colors and my branding colors, but all I did was put the text box across the top and that's it. So, but I can send it to you. Just shoot me an email. Okay. Any other questions? little zig with the wants and needs. That's all I got for you guys. You're welcome. So next week when we go through this, will you kind of, we'll start from the beginning, kind of go through how you got to each page really quickly yeah. to move on. Okay, so yes. we'll get kind of a refresher. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I will. All right, guys, if you guys on Zoom don't have any questions, you are all free to leave. Thank you for joining. As always, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. Have a great day, guys. You too.